Here you go, my friend. The Rival 650. Another wireless mouse? Yep, it's the best one so far. Yeah, but you always say that. Well, see for yourself. All right. thing is pretty damn good. Let's review right after this. The new Fatality H370 Performance motherboard is well equipped for 8 gen processors with 10 power phase design, dual Ultra M.2 slots for storage, a fantastic audio interface and dual RGB headers for addressable and 12 volt lighting accessories. Check out the full ASRock 300 series lineup down below. All right, guys, so I'm extremely happy to see a quality wireless mouse from SteelSeries so they can compete in the marketplace, but mainly to compete with Logitech, who have held this really dominant position in the wireless space. And so the Rival 650 is just basically a wireless iteration of the Rival 600. You can check out that review over here. And uh, of course, because it's wireless, we have a nice price premium that comes with that at $120 compared to $80 for the wired version. As usual, I will leave my favorite wireless and wired mice in the description below. Check them out so you can get your game on. Now, the main competitor to the Rival 650 right now, I think would be the G Pro Wireless, which cost $150, so it's slightly more expensive, so I can see where this would tie in, but the main disadvantage with the Rival 650 is the weight. At 121 grams, it is significantly heavier than the G Pro Wireless, which is only 80 grams, but on top of that, this has actual weight customization in four gram increments, so you can install four uh, little weights on each side to give you a total of 153 grams if you prefer a heavier mouse. And all the unused weights can be stored inside this rubber housing that you can wrap around, let's say your keyboard cable, so you don't lose it. You could look at it as an advantage versus the G Pro Wireless if you prefer heavier mice, if you play at a really high DPI and prefer to have the mouse that is grounded to the mouse mat. And to access that internal weight system, you simply pull off these magnetic side plates and you need to apply a little bit of force. So don't worry about them popping off while you're gaming, that will never happen and you simply install the weights on these little rubber cavities. Once you pull off the magnetic plates, usually the weights fall out as well because while they're pretty secure inside, they, uh, they tend to kind of get loosened up while the mouse is in use. And weight-wise, compared to the Rival 600, we have an additional 25 grams here because of that battery. So if you want even a lighter mouse but prefer the shape and the customization over here, you can definitely check out the Rival 600. In terms of build quality, it feels absolutely identical to the Rival 600. Super satisfying rubber texture on the entire body and really grippy sections on each side to kind of lock your grip. The mouse wheel I would say is best in the business, super satisfying scroll steps, good texture, uh, nice uh, middle click as well that's light enough to press, but that uh, fin button to change your DPI is still a little bit too high for me and it's still slightly higher than the Rival 310 which I prefer. It's low profile because every time I press the middle click I also activate that DPI shift. The primary buttons have that complementing curvature, so your fingers just fall in place and the actual clicks are incredible. The browser buttons are in perfect position, low profile and nice depression when that actuation happens. And we have a third button at the front that is slightly difficult to reach, but uh, you could program a macro in there that you don't normally use, but uh, whenever you need to, you simply readjust your grip to get to it. And so for my hybrid grip style, absolutely no problem here. A super comfortable mouse, uh, claw grip would work very well as well. And for smaller hands, palm grip will be absolutely no problem. However, I do prefer the slightly shorter body of the Rival 310 that has a slightly more aggressive slant on the right side versus here. Uh, but uh, I'm guessing it's just something I've gotten used to because I've been using that mouse since it launched. Of course, we have RGB illumination over here. It's pretty, but for a wireless mouse, definitely disable it to preserve battery life. And at the bottom, we have something unique to SteelSeries, two sensors, one is for tracking, the other is for liftoff distance. So the tracking sensor here is the same as with the Rival 600, the TrueMove 3 Plus, amazing uh, tracking over here, true one-to-one -one performance throughout the entire CPI range up to 12,000 CPI and the second sensor detects your liftoff distance so you can really adjust that based on your surface level, based on your play style so that you have absolutely no uh, mouse you know, jitter uh, when the mouse is placed down or when you lift it. It is really cool to play around with the liftoff distance setting and see when the sensor stops tracking on my mouse mat because I've used that mouse mat for 
years and there are certain depressions that I'm guessing have been made because of my hand. Whenever the mouse goes over those sections, there's no tracking or it's very like kind of jerky. And that is because the sensor is picking up the unevenness of that uh, really flat mouse mat and that's pretty incredible. Of course, that could be seen as a disadvantage as well. So just make sure to fine tune the lift up distance for your particular mouse mat. And at the bottom, we have a power button with color coordination plus a connect toggle. So you can uh, sync that with a USB receiver that is pretty small, that has little ridges so you can pull that out from your computer easily. But there is no way to store the receiver on the mouse itself, unlike with the G Pro Wireless that has the little compartment at the bottom of the mouse, which would have been pretty nice to have uh, with the Rival 650. And so my gaming experience with the Rival 650, given its fantastic ergonomics, incredible buttons, and an awesome sensor was satisfactory. But remember, this is 121 grams, which is 25 grams heavier than the Rival 600. And I prefer uh, my mice around 90 gram weights. So I've been kind of spoiled by the G Pro Wireless, which is 80 grams, and the Rival uh, 310, which is 88 grams, I think. So gaming with something slightly heavier was definitely weird. There is that adjustment period where you kind of get to know how you have to flick and how you have to perform in games so that you can be back to feeling super comfortable with your crosshair and knowing exactly where it will land based on how much movement you have, you know, in the physical world. And though, you know, after a few gaming sessions, I was pretty comfortable gaming with something that heavy, but uh, without the wire, it definitely gives you that freedom of movement on the mouse mat. First place. Now, in terms of battery performance, you know, you can't expect miracles when you're dealing with something of this caliber, but you can expect at least 24 hours of continuous usage. So that is what, three, five days minimum of game time. And uh, when I plugged it into my motherboard, I charged 14% in 15 minutes, which is pretty good. But if you plug into a fast charging port on your motherboard, uh, Steel Series claims you'll get an additional 10 hours of battery life in just 15 minutes. And that is where the G Pro Wireless has an advantage. This thing can last for 60 hours without any illumination with that constant usage and 48 hours with some illumination versus 24 on the Rival 650. And so for conclusion, I wanna say that the Rival 650 is a needed introduction to the market to compete with the likes of the G Pro Wireless because while that has a spot in the market for really competitive scenes and for people who love lighter mice like myself, the Rival 650 is that opposite kind of alternative to people who want something heavier with more weight customization uh, and having that really precise fine tuning for that depth sensor uh, for that lift off distance adjustment. Plus there's that $30 price advantage with the Rival 650 versus the G Pro Wireless. And now if you've been wanting to cut the cord and have that freedom of movement on the mouse mat, the Rival 650 is a fantastic alternative to basically all the wireless mice that are available right now for gaming of this caliber and it deserves the Harbor Canucks the Amgur Award. As always, I will list all my favorite mice in the description below, wired and wireless options in there, so you can check them out. Make sure to see this other relevant content, subscribe to our new boot sequence channel, and we'll see you in the next video.